Thank you for the introduction. My name is Insu Jiang from the University of Michigan, and today I'm going to introduce my product work, Ublack, resilient distributed training of large models using pipeline templates. Today's models are getting larger and larger, so even a single latest GPU cannot store all model parameters in its memory. Naturally, we started thinking about uh, splitting and distributing model into multiple GPUs. Using model parallelism, GPUs assigned to each pipeline stage can have a portion of model states and train a model in a pipeline manner. Combined with data parallelism that distributes training input, hybrid parallelism is becoming a norm of distributed training. Um, while Gemini introduced why fault tolerance is very important, um, I would like to reiterate that. Um, hybrid parallelism enables to use hundreds or thousands of GPUs for a single job, but this raises a traditional problem of distributed execution back to surface fault tolerance. So the more GPUs are used, uh, the higher probability of failures and cost of each failure are at the same time, so overheads of, uh, from failures are getting noticeable. This is even worse uh, in distributed training because all devices must be synchronized for every iteration, meaning just one GPU failures can make the entire job stuck. Some reports from industry like Meta or Lion complained that the impact of failures were not ignorable. To support fault tolerance, some works have been proposed recently. Bamboo provides redundancy by redundantly computing the same iteration twice, but in different GPUs. Um, it successfully avoids full restart uh, when a failure happens, but um, redundant computation slows down its throughput drastically. Worse, there's no fault tolerance guarantee, so um, when, whether, whether it can recover from failure depends on the location of failures. Varuna proposes pre-generating all viable execution plans so that when failures happen, it can quickly switch to a new plan. As there is no computational overheads, it is generally fast. Still, it needs to fully restart by terminating and relaunching all processes, loading the last checkpoint, so its recovery is slow. This slow recovery actually affects its throughput. So Varuna is getting slower when failure happens more frequently, or loading checkpoint takes longer because of the larger model size and so on. Ublack is designed to satisfy all three requirements. Ublack is inspired by the fact that hybrid parallel training already has inherent redundancy, so we exploit it for guaranteed fault tolerance. And to achieve high throughput and fast recovery at the same time, we introduce pipeline template. From the previous example of hybrid parallel execution, there are three pipeline replicas, which means we can tolerate up to two pipeline failures, even in the worst case. We still have the model states across the nodes, so we can copy them to restore the lost model states. Google provides configurability here so that if users need more, uh, to tolerate more failures, Google increases the number of replicas so that it can tolerate more simultaneous failures. Theoretically, if you can specify the hard upper bound of the number of simultaneous failure in your cluster, then Ublake doesn't even need a single checkpoint during tech, uh, during, for the entire training. Now I'm going to introduce the core concept of Ublack, pipeline template. Ublack introduced the concept of template for distributed training for the first time. A single pipeline template is a specification of a single pipeline execution of a model given specific number of nodes. We analyze which way of partitioning GPUs and model layers would provide the best throughput, and map each pair to create pipeline stages to form a pipeline. After generating the specification, it's used again and again to instantiate pipelines for training. Ublack creates multiple heterogeneous pipeline templates, each of which has different number of nodes specified. Parallel execution plan is made as a linear combination of pipeline templates. As an example, um, parallel execution with 13 nodes can be configured as a linear combination of these three different pipeline templates. The way of configuration, this, uh, this way of configuration has two advantages. First, it is available to use all nodes, even if the number of nodes does not form a full grid. 
13 nodes, as you know, uh, is a prime number, but linearly combining different pipeline templates can cover all 13 nodes. More importantly, it drastically reduces the search space to find the uh, best parallel execution plan. Considering such heterogeneous com pipeline configuration, the search space is enormously large, while linear combination of predefined pipe predefined pipeline template is countable. When failures happen, Ubla can provide fast recovery by simply re-instantiating another pipeline template. Here we have a pipeline instantiated from the pipeline template for four nodes. After a node fails, we now have only three nodes. Because we have a pipeline template for three nodes, we can simply reinstantiate a new pipeline from the pipeline template for three nodes. Of course, after reinstantiation, some nodes still do not have some model layers indicated as red boxes in the screen. Because we have other replicas in other machines, uh, we just we can simply copy missing layers from them. Now, uh, this pipeline is uh, complete and can resume the training. Thanks to the pipeline template, which are pre-generated before, changing pipeline configuration can be done instantly. Now you might wonder, why don't we just copy layers uh, into adjacent nodes without reinstantiation? It actually has two problems compared to the pipeline reinstantiation. First, uh, nodes might not have enough memory to have more layers, leading to out-of-memory error during training. Second, if, even if they could, they now have more computations, and execution speed between stages become imbalanced. The imbalanced pipeline state execution slows down the entire pipeline due to the synchronous nature of pipe, uh, this retraining. Using pipeline template, we already have a guarantee that the model layers can fit in the given GPUs, and their execution is well balanced. Just using pipeline template is not enough for high throughput and fast fault tolerance. Let's see what more should be addressed. First, we need to determine the number of pipeline templates and their number of node specification. This is crucial for using all available nodes. Second, we need to determine the how many actual pipelines need to be instantiated from each pipeline template. Third, uh, we briefly introduced pipeline reinstantiation in a failure case, but there might not be a feasible pipeline template to be instantiated. We provide a pipeline merge as a solution for such case. First, how many pipeline templates are actually needed? It is, of course, possible to have pipeline templates for every possible number of nodes. For example, if we train a model with 13 nodes, we can simply have pipeline templates for up to 13 nodes. As you know, it is very inefficient, considering we might want to use up to hundreds of nodes. In fact, in this example of 13 nodes, we on only these three pipeline templates are enough to cover. How Ublack finds the number of pipeline templates and the number of nodes per pipeline template? They are formulated as a Frobenius problem. Based on the formulation, it is probably guaranteed that the linear combination of the generated set of pipeline templates use all nodes. The beauty of this formulation is that they can cover not only the number of nodes at the beginning, which is 13 in our example, but also covers any number of nodes that is less than 13. So this guarantee enables that a pre-generated set of pipeline templates cover any failure situation, no matter how many failures happen, without adding additional templates during the runtime. Details about the formulation can be found in the paper. After generating pipeline templates, pipelines are instantiated from them. From the same example which we, uh, we used, the 13 nodes can be used to create four pipelines as in the right side of the screen. However, this execution plan is not a unique example, and there might be more plans with the same, num uh, same set of pipeline templates and same number of nodes. We use dynamic programming to enumerate all possible plans. And for every possible plans, we estimate iteration time and pick the fastest one. But here, estimating iteration time requires to know batch size per pipeline. At this moment, we only know the global batch size, 
but do not know how it should be distributed to the pipelines. We formulate it as an integer optimization problem. The solver finds mini-batch for each pipeline, where the sum of batch matches to the given global batch, while minimizing overall iteration time of this plan. After calculating mini-batch for pipelines for every plant, we can estimate iteration time and can pick the fastest one. Let's recap how a pipeline template is used when failures happen. Assume we lost two nodes here. The first pipeline now has only two nodes. Because we have a pipeline template for two nodes, we simply re-instantiate it and replace the old one. Same reinstantiation happens in parallel to the second pipeline using the pipeline template for three nodes. As training goes on, there might be not be a feasible pipeline template to be instantiated. In this example, there's no pipeline template for just one node. Instead of leaving that one node unused, we merge it with another pipeline. Then we have three nodes, so that pipeline template for three nodes can be instantiated. Nublet probably guarantees that there's always a feasible pi pipeline template when you merge pipelines. In overall architecture, we first generate a set of pipeline templates. Given the generated pipeline template, the distributed execution engine instantiates actual pipelines from the pipeline template and deploy them to the node cluster. Note that the, once a set of pipeline template is generated, this set is fixed and never changed to, uh, for the entire training. When failures happen, um, the engine re-instantiates the affected pipeline without full result. After pipeline re-instantiation, the cluster can continue training. We evaluated and compared Banvu, Varuna, and Ublek using 30 NVIDIA A40 GPUs and InfiniBand. Um, we use the various size of models. In this talk, we will show you Bert Large as a small model and GPT-3 6.7 billion as a large model. Uh, more details about training setup are in the paper as well. We first present overall training throughput in those frameworks to see how much Ublek is better and then why it is better through the breakdown analysis. Let's start from small model throughput changes over time. We use the Bamboo's spot instance traces and simulator to simulate throughput changes for all three frameworks. Here, access is time. After initially getting 30 spot GPUs, it may be printed or re-added over time. Um, we have the graph of GPU availability over time in the paper. Horizontal dot line is an average for the entire time. Varuna matches Ublek for small models. It is quite expected because checkpointing and reconfiguration overheads for small models are not that big. For Bamboo, however, it's overall slow compared to both Baruna and Ublek. If model is larger, however, Ublek outperforms both of the works. In fact, for the large model, both Baruna and Bamboo can't even train the model. Bamboo needs so much amount of memory for redundant computation raising out of memory error even with the smallest uh, micro batch configuration in our setup. For Varuna, it uses all of its time for reconfiguration, fully restarting the entire cluster and loading the checkpoint from the remote storage. Let's see why performance is that different comparing Ublek with each of the work. Effective time here uh, is the portion of the time that is used for actual training. This breakdown analysis is done under a controlled environment where failures are manually injected periodically. As expected, most of Bamboo's time is wasted um, due to the redundant computation. But what surprised us that is that the overhead dominates even in the low failure frequency because they speculatively execute redundant computation even there is no failures. Now let's compare with Varuna and Ublek. Varuna is optimized for low failure frequency with a computational overhead in runtime. So they are compatible to Ublek, but the, although the throughput is slightly less due to various overheads, including checkpointing. When failures happen more frequently, however, its throughput suddenly drops, as we saw in the end-to-end -end throughput graph. This throughput drop is worse when model is getting larger, while for small model throughput, 
throughput drop is about 30%, Varuna lost 90% of its effective time of large model due to higher failure frequency. When you zoom in large model uh, high failure frequency graph, we found reconfiguration is dominating, occupying nearly 70% of the entire time of Varuna used just for the, uh, restarting the cluster and loading the checkpoint. 21% is further wasted by fallbacks. Uh, the uh, fallback is the iteration time that Varuna successfully finished, but lost as they are not checkpointed. Because the reconfiguration overheads will be much higher when either model is larger or failure happens more frequently, Varuna might not be able to uh, train larger model in larger cluster. In conclusion, Ublack is the first resilient distributed training framework that provides a rigorous photons guarantee, high throughput, and fast recovery simultaneously. Um, thank you for the attention. Then, before taking questions, I would like to announce two things. Uh, first one, while preparing the slides, we found the errors in Bernard numbers. So if you already read the paper from archive, those numbers are wrong. So we are working on preparing Core Center to submit it to ACM, and we will be updated very soon. And the second one is that although we open source the implementation to GitHub, I have to acknowledge that the code quality is not that good and <laughs> not ready to be deployed to the real cluster, mostly because of the lack of manpower. So please open an issue and make a PR to the repository. Uh, we would appreciate your contribution. And also, we are open for collaboration. So please feel free to email me uh, through this email address. Thank you again, and I'm now ready to take a question. Hey, uh, questions? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, very novel work. Uh, this is Chen Zhou from USTC. I have two questions. And the first one is, um, is Zhuang Wang, the former, the former presenter's uh, checkpoint technique. Uh, it, um, can that checkpoint technique be applied to your heterogeneous pipeline template skill? Um, yeah, I guess the question is about um, whether the Gemini checkpointing technique can be applied to Ublack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's yes. So um, I think it's compatible to use all Ublack and the Gemini together. So honestly, Ublack even doesn't need the checkpointing, but we can just use the checkpoint as a backup uh, method. So that check traditional checkpoint can be replaced with Gemini. Oh, OK, OK. And uh, the second question is, uh, when I train GPT-3 with 96 layers uh, using one A100, I find uh, the memory occupation is too heavy. Um, uh, even I use some memory saving techniques, I can only uh, fit uh, about uh, at most two or three layers into one A100. And in this scenario, uh, if I want to use it, want to, want to use pipeline to train it, um, I can only uh, for example, I can only use 96, uh, divide, 96 stages to form a pipeline or 48 stages to form a pipeline, which I, it seems uh, not too flexible uh, compared to your mentioned two or three or four uh, stages. And, uh, how do you think about it? Uh, so uh, I don't think I fully understand the question. So uh, it doesn't have to have a 96 or eight, uh, 48 pipeline stages. It could be like um, less than like 20 because you, we can just uh, apply the tensor parallelism or FSTP together with pipeline parallelism. So yeah. Okay, I got Does it. Does that answer your question? Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Hello, yeah, Johan Lee from UC Berkeley, and yeah, great talk and very beautiful slides. Thank you. So uh, yeah, and I have a question about communication across different pipeline templates. So right now, like basically during normal execution, you have different lens pipelines. How do you handle the communication across different, say, stages? Yeah, and will there be a lagger that, like, you know, one node requires a lot of communication that makes the whole training process slower? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. That's a good question. So um, in the actual implementation, we actually don't communicate in terms uh, in the stage granularity. So we split the stages into layers, and the communication is done in layer granularity. Yeah, then there will there be a specific node that, you know, that do a lot of communication that will be a like, lagger? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, because the layer granularity is more fine-grained than the stage granularity, 
the amount of data to be transferred is smaller, which means that it might not fully saturate the entire network bandwidth. However, because it can be overlapped with the computation at the end of pipeline, so those kind of overlap can be I mitigated. See. I see, I see, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Olsan from Janssen. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, my question is that if I understand correctly, uh, you are uh, using homogeneous devices in a sense that all GPUs have the same compute power. If you are applying the same technique for uh, heterogeneous GPUs, then how would it affect this uh, heterogeneous pipeline execution and uh, the way that you select them, basically? Uh, thank you for the great question. So uh, we don't have an answer yet because, um, you know, the pipeline template, as you said, they assume the homogeneous devices. So we don't know whether uh, the pipeline is actually deployed to heterogeneous devices. We cannot expect their actual uh, iteration time. Then, which actually leads to underutilization due to straggler problem. So uh, we are working on the other, I mean, the future work, like uh, instead of just a uh, zero or one fault tolerance, we are working on the straggler mitigation, which also includes targeted uh, supporting heterogeneous devices as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the scan.